So, uh, two good regs. Uh, we're going to replay this hand and uh, get your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think we should do? We'll do a little vote in the chat, maybe. Quiz time with Texas Tunnel. All right. Hand through. So, uh, button has been raised and we defend Jack 9. I assume so far no one's doing anything different, uh, nor do I think we should. Uh, we check uh, opponent min bets and we decide to call again. People can maybe check raise, check folding is not an option, obviously. Donkey is not really an option here. So this is pretty much, I would say, probably 95% of you are still with me in terms of how we play the hand. And eight comes. This is where we may get some people going down different avenues. We decided to go for a donk small here. Now, there are some people who would like to check here. There are some people who would like to maybe donk bigger. Um, and obviously, if you check, there's a whole option you have. Check call, check fold, check raise, whatever. Um, but we chose a donk. I would guess probably... 50, 60, 70% of you might still be with me in terms of donking small, kind of makes sense from a theoretical point of view. Um, and I guess this is how a lot of you may have played the hand. Uh, but let's just imagine you've all played the hand like this and we get to the river. What would you like to do on this river is the question. Do you want to check cool? Do you want to check fold? Do you want to block donk? What would you like to do? We're going to pull up GTO base and we're going to have a look and see uh, what GTO base does. Uh, feel free to jump in with some suggestions and then I'll show you what I did. I'm only pulling up GTO base just because it's like I'm interested to see. I don't typically actually use that much GTO software. I use a lot more kind of, I use some GTO software actually, it's not true. But yeah, actually weirdly enough, there's very little min betting on this board. So on the flop at least, so we're already in a kind of tricky to analyze situation, but let's say we did face a min bet. Um, we would be calling very small sliver of check raising. And on this eight of hearts turn, there's a ton of donkin, 70%. We have a decent amount of the small sizing, not any of the 1.5, uh, but it's mostly going 1.5. Uh, sorry. Oh yeah, there is actually 1.5. I'll take it back. Third of the time it's going 1.5 with our hand two. Our opponent calls. And this 10 comes on the river. Let's see. I haven't actually looked at this hand in GTO, so I'm not sure. Now, I will say GTO never takes a line that uh, I took, but I actually like it a lot. So, any suggestions anyone in chat want to say what they would do? Stick it in. Good. That is, uh, I guess we're going to get some more uh, suggestions as we come along. But yes, it's exactly what I did. And I think it works really well as, like, it's one of these, these are good ones to catch. And I think these are good ones that you can very quickly miss because we have basically a potential value bet on the turn where we're sort of betting because we're kind of blocking uh maybe getting some calls from ace highs or maybe get some calls from some other stuff maybe just folding out equity etc etc and on the river i decide that actually i think the hand is pretty good to bluff now in gto this doesn't actually happen um and i think the majority of us would probably just end up check folding or check check in against a better hand but um i think the best thing to do on this river is probably jam and the reason i suggest that is when we jam, we're obviously repping like we got trips plus. When we bet the turn, we also say we could have trips here. Can we have trips? Yeah, of course, we'd have every 8x, right? What else could we have that would be uh, blocking the turn? Well, we could have a straight draw. We could have 6-7. We could have jack-7. We could have 10-jack. We could have maybe queen-jack, um, which we'd all definitely block donk with. Hey, a lot of those have hit this board, right? So it's really hard to have a bluff here. What could we bluff with when we shove this river if we're not bluffing this? Anyone got any suggestions? Maybe, a, I don't know, a queen something. But we don't really have queen six of diamonds because we probably just check fold. We don't even block that, uh, block donk that on the turn. So I think in terms of our perceived range, I think a jam's great. What do I think? I think I would give our opponent credit, by the way. I wouldn't try this against a lot of regs, but against a reg that can kind of hand read and hopefully put the puzzle together, because I think even with his hand, I'm probably still under bluffing. I think most regs will, solid regs, that can hand read will probably fold aces, ace king, jack 10, queen 10, queen, not queen jack obviously, but their range will probably also end up calling B maybe, maybe king 10 decides it can't fold, um, but it's gonna be queen jack's gonna call and 8x is gonna call plus, and obviously a set of kings or a set of knights. So I think that's uh, actually ends up being a, a really difficult hand to have. If we take a look at Flopzilla, in GTO, if we looked at GTO uh, solution here, uh, GTO is never shoving uh, this river. 
So this is the river solution. Jack9 is doing a whole mix of stuff. <laughs> Checking sometimes, blocking sometimes. I don't know what to get called by when it blocks, but I guess I makes high or something. It's blocking to get called by sixes and sevens occasionally. I don't even know. Folding ace nine. I think it's blocking as a bit of a bluff to fold at ace 10. I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, Jack nine is also going for the half pot sizing, apparently, which is more as a bluff. OK, that makes sense. And then they're three quarter sizing, which is obviously the bluff. Um, you could obviously jam as well. Against the jam, we expect ace king to sometimes cool, sometimes fold. I expect mostly folds. We expect queens to mainly cool. I expect many folds. We expect jacks to mainly cool. I expect many folds. King 10, king 9. Don't know if they call or fold. Might call, might fold. Queen jack obviously calls. Queen 10, I expect many folds. Queen jack 10, I expect many folds. So if we added those no, no locks, we'd definitely be in the more of the folds uh, camp. If we look at Flopzilla, and uh, if we quickly put in a button range, because we're obviously analyzing our opponents, so we'll put in that button, we'll put in the C bet, we'll say a C bet range on this flop with the small sizing, which is probably more realistic, a range than what uh, equilibrium would have for most people. And we'll say opponent bets range. They might not bet sevens or something, but whatever. Um, and then the turn comes eight hearts, and we don't small. And now let's just say, I think our opponent can definitely have pretty much everything are they definitely raising something what's the most likely hand they'd raise versus the turn small donk i honestly don't know like it's probably not raising aces probably might raise ace eight but i don't even know if that does the rainbow i would say they probably have top pair plus actually any pair plus uh and mid pair plus and maybe even some weak pairs but maybe not gut shot sure uh so something like that is their range and then the center of clubs comes and we can see the equity of our of our hand on this run out against their entire range is actually three percent that's how much showdown we have we have three percent showdown when we check here so actually i think it's a really good at river shove decision um and if we shove and we say that we think the good two pair plus is always calling maybe aces we can say that if that was the case uh we get about 42 percent folds which would be Probably pretty good for us um, in terms of we need 50% folds uh, with this. If we add, whoops, if we add in uh, our aces as a fold, we don't know about the two pair, but let's say 50% of the time, this might cool. We'd be getting only, we'd be getting 68% folds. So that'd be really good. Block donk because the range is connected with the boards. Uh, block donk, I think, is unfortunately just too, we wouldn't be able to get value right. We're just getting too smashed by this range that we typically fix. Check fold, I think, is the other option, right? Check fold, I think, would be absolutely fine. And then it goes check, check. But check, check, like checking is just very low EV because check folds will be fine. But even check, check, I mean, we're hoping to get called by what? Um, we're hoping it goes check, check, and we win against 9-7. The two suited commas nine seven out there, so I don't think check check works very well. So I think check check is not really so good. And uh, would you do on this turn with your lower nine x? Uh, and if so, would you check those on the river? Yeah, that's an option. So the jack spades obviously blocks some of the value. We want our opponent not to have a straight, and they can have queen jack. They can have jack seven. Having a jack means they could have fewer combos of queen jack and jack seven. And so if, for example, we had, and this is one of the nice things, if we had. Um, Let's say it's three of a kind plus calls us. We get 26% folds. If we have nine, two of diamonds, as an example, very unblockers, we get 27% folds. So the jack is helping our fold equity, but it's probably doesn't matter, right? So yeah. Um, anyway, that's an interesting hand, I thought. So I thought we'd run through that and share some decisions. I don't think it's uh, one of the things I will encourage everybody to think about. Um, Try not to view hands as like we have to find the right answer and we have to find consensus and this is how I play this hand always. It's more to kind of explore options and make sure we kind of think about different things. There's no right answer. Like if we shove and our opponent decides to hear us off with ace nine, we, which some opponents might, we make a pretty bad bluff, right? You need notes on your opponents. Absolutely, said I'll check. Yes, notes on the opponent. I would not try this at low stakes. I would try this against maybe against good regs at low stakes. I would try this. Yeah, I wouldn't try and bluff this against a bad reg because a bad reg is not following aces. <laughs> a bad reg is not following ace king. A bad reg is not following king jack. A bad reg might not fold ten jack. 
A bad reg might not follow his own. A bad reg might, whatever, you know. So, yeah. I would agree. At several limits, bad regs might call in 90% of cases. And so, yeah. Bluff with caution. Anyway. Uh, last question, Chris Revolution uh, versus Unknown Fish, heads up, what percent two barrel is good? It depends, but on some turns, you could probably bluff ridiculous. Uh, you could, sorry, barrel probably on certain turns, like 90% of your range, and on other turns, I would honestly probably end up barreling really, really small parts of our range. I personally would bluff all 9x, and if you bluff all your 9x, you might be over bluffing. Very true, I would be over bluffing, but the question is for bet, bet bluffs, are we perceived to bluff those hands? And if the answer is no, it doesn't matter that we're over bluffing. We're over bluffing in a spot where we're probably getting over folds, which is a spot we want to over bluff, as long as we're perceived to be under bluffing. It's, I think we're perceived to under bluff this spot, therefore over bluffing it in reality is a good decision. There's a little tip. Top tip. Anyway, 